So, here we have a box. In this box from Torque Racing is my new suspension for my KTM 790. So, what do you think, this kids? Ooh. There's the first box. Let's get that out. <laughs> okay, that's one. I'll just slide that out of shot. Open this one. And then we'll pull that back in. Oh my God, it's like your brother who left your present at Christmas just to be an arsehole. Another box, like past the parcel. Okay. Come on, get that. Slide that back in. Right, here this one, and the front forks, well, all the bits for the front forks anyway, so, ooh, springs, oil, a tool, oh there to open the um, top of the cartridges, and then there's my two cartridges up in there, okay, never mind. Of that one. This one's probably gonna look cooler. Oh yes. Booklet. Another tool. Let's get rid of check underneath there. No, nothing. Right, here we have it. The rear shock. So this one is I've gone for the extreme, which is fully adjustable. So it should just work straight out of the box because it's weighted for me um, and my weight. Just slide it, get it all out. Two springs, I won't open them just in case there's any oil on it. And then two packs of screwdrivers with bits in them. I can say I'll video when I install this, but at the moment it's just a Monday night. I've got home from work with a large parcel. And there's the, the tops the forks. So that's again got my compression on one side, rebound on the other. So I guess I'll have to make sure I put the right cap on the right fork. Yeah, there's a rebound one. So uh, it's pretty cool that the orange anodized will go well with the, with the KTM. So yeah, that's the unboxing of the full Tractive Extreme Suspension for the KTM 790. The S version, not the R. Um, so it's gonna be smaller than the R um, because I didn't want to raise my bike at all. I didn't want to lower my bike. Um, the bike will lower itself slightly because the sag will be set correctly. Because at the moment, with me being 62 kilo, 63 kilos with all my gear on, um, and the bike weighed set out for like a standard rider of 80, 80, 90 kilos, I think they come set at. Um, it doesn't really notice me, it doesn't sag at all really, so this should make a huge difference. I can't wait to fit it now. Right, time to install the suspension. I'm not gonna do like a how-to video because I'm winging it and don't really know what I'm doing. I've got instructions and torque settings and everything written down the board but there isn't any video that I've seen out there that has the sort of process of the tractive suspension going on a 790. So I thought, well, I'll do a video. So yeah, it's just gonna be kind of like follow me along as I do it rather than a how to, because I'm not doing that. So I'm gonna quickly whip off the uh, my pannier rails, my exhaust, the rear wheel and the seat. Um, and then we'll get into uh, pulling the suspension out and uh, swapping over. Out. I saw someone get one of these and stick it in the end of the exhaust when they're washing them, washing the bike to stop the water going down the exhaust. It does work, but I never bothered. But it's, uh, Quite a clever little trick. 
Right, that's the bike stripped down. So now it's time to undo the relevant bolts and take the rear shock out. This is the first bolt to undo. Loosen it off. Back it out a little bit, but don't actually remove it yet. Yeah, that feels out. Right, I'm going to the bottom one. There we go. And we pop round to the other side. So then we just need to back off or loosen off this adjuster. It's a right left-handed thread, so you have to do it up to loosen it. That should do it. Right, so now we should be able to move this bolt and the suspension drop out. So that's the bottom separated. And the tops of the other one's a bit fiddly because you've got a bolt stuck down that little hole. I think sometimes you just, that's it, angle the bit in the bolt, it comes out. And there it is. The original stock rear shock. You don't bother taking the cover off because that stays with it. It won't go on the new tractive one, so it can stay there. After a bit of struggling, I noticed that we're gonna have to remove this the rear brake reservoir little bolt. Um, I'll show you why. Pull that out of the way. I'm going to twist it off and move that out of the way because that clip gets stuck um, out of the way. And also removing the clutch um, sort of support bucket and because the clutch cable swings right in the way and if we can move it out of the way and make more room, it's far better. Um, and then pushing the clutch cable right into here so it's out of the way. The next thing to do is to just undo these two bolts here on either side to allow the subframe just to lift up and give you a touch more room as well. Before we put the bottom bolt in, it's easier to put these in first while you've still got movement over the subframe. There we go. And the next thing we do is just tighten up this screw to 10 newton meters, which is not a lot, and unfortunately, my half inch torque wrench doesn't go down to 10 newton meters, so. Right, let's just go. Uh, click. <laughs> so now we can do up that one and the one at the top. I'm just gonna stick that in there just to hold it so it doesn't go anywhere. I don't want that to go. There we go. There we go. Rear shock done and in. Nice. Alright, let's just quickly put this together. So I'll do. put my one finger clutch back on. go, clutch back together. I might just torque those two up properly. 
I'm going to put everything back together, put the rear wheel in, re build it all back up again. Um, and then tomorrow we will attack the forks. Oh, there she is, all back together. Move the suspension in. It's all really good. And you can't see much from there. I say it doesn't have the little cover like the stock one does, but it looks really good with the orange anodizing. I love it. So I've got the bike lifted up and the front end off the floor. Um, I'm going to, I've labelled up the forks just so that make my life a bit easier once they're out. I know which ones are left and which to put the compression in and which to put the rebound in. Um, I'm going to take the calipers off first because I think it's going to be easier with the wheel on. Uh, yeah, and then take the wheel out, take these off, take the um, forks out and then we'll start doing one. Right, tools. the other fork. I've done the first one so the process is exactly the same. I've loosened this cap off as you saw on the bike. There we go. Just under the bottom. Which is that one's better than the other one. The other one was like grey shite. Now I'm choosing to change my fo um, fork seals as well because might as well while I'm here. Let this oil drain a bit more. It's a good time to go and make a cup of tea if you can prop it up somewhere. Right, soft jaws in the rice. I'm actually do this the other way. One sec. Because there we go. Now I know from previous experience from doing the last one, this is where it pissed oil out again. So now I've cracked that. Get back over here. Do this screw, take it out over my bucket. At this point, this whole block can come out. And if you were just not doing your fork seals, you could just screw the new. Uh, cartridges in straight away and in fact in their instructions is basically what it's saying. You uh, get that, put the new cartridge in, drop the bolt and then do your, do your oil and, and you just put your spring on and things like that. So we'll come back to that but I'm going to uh, do my fork seals quickly while it's off. Now what we do 
if you get the new, on these, I've taken a picture already, uh, they've got rebound and compression on the bottom of them as marked, so you know which one's which in the pack. And then we're reusing the old nut to put these back on. Just out of shot, I've got a shelf so it can rest up against there. Uh, bolt. This gets done up to 25 Newton meters, which is that set to. Not got enough room in the vise. There we go. Right. Fill with oil. The air gap on this, as far as my instructions are saying, is 90. Um, Ninety millimeters. I've got the little measuring tool. That I found. The measuring tool doesn't fit with this in a way. So if you take that off, then I can slide that on. It's already set to 90, 90 millimeters. So that's fine. I'm gonna put that on. And I'll put that on top. And I can push down on this. Because this has to be pushed all the way down and then past the stop at the bottom, because it's a bit the, the last couple of centimetres harder. And then I can suck out any extra. That's why I need a third hand. Sucking the excess oil out. This is without the spring. And with this the uh, piston pushed all the way down. There we go. Looking there. So I let this back up. Take that off. I say so this bit here. It's just the way this Motion Pro tool is, or the way I'm using it. Um, you might be able to squeeze it in like that, something, or make your own stick that holds holds the uh, holds that, so you don't have to take all that off. Now I've got spaces with this but the which I would have thought of preload spaces because there's one already in the cartridge that's that's down there um, in this box packet here um, there's a two fat ones and two thin ones so this in the manual mentions about backing this off Again, you might not have to, but seeing as it says it, spring. Not got enough room in this garage at all. So I've put the. It's got numbers on the top. This is a 
520. No idea what that means. Probably to do with my strength, spring weight, and things like that. So that goes in like that. And then you can get a 15 mil spanner. Pop it on there, and it'll hold your spring. Then you can screw your the top on, making sure you get the right top for the right fork. So this is the right hand fork, so it's the rebound one. It's easier for me because I've only got one left. Nope, not that. Now, this is a 22mm spanner. I don't have 22mm spanner, but I do have some parallel grips, so that will do. So that's that up and done. You can pull the fork up and then start screwing in the cap. You get this little tool in the pack. It goes into goes into the uh, holes at the top, and then you can spin that round. I'm just going to do it gently, and then I'll. Uh, seat them properly when it's on the bike so I can clamp the clamp the fork leg. But that's it. Oh no it's not. Put the uh, dampening back in. So on my manual, which I've got on the board here, it's saying 10. And the first click is zero. So zero one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be right. Right. That's all ready to go in now. Um, I'm not going to slide this in just yet because I want to do some bits on the front of the bike. As I say, that's nothing to do with this job, but uh, you've got marks on the top of the forks. So before you take them out, work out um, which mark it's sitting in. The standard, I believe, from comparing mine and my cousin's bike, is the, you've only got one sort of those lines showing. Um, so it's the top of the trip, top triple is sitting um, in line with the second line. So you have like an equal gap, one line equal gap, and then the actual top of, or the, the seam between the uh, cap and the fork. But anyway, take pictures before you take it apart and then you'll know what's going on. So yeah, it's just a case of mounting it back into the bike now. But like I say, I'm going to look at the front end and tweak that because I think a bit of it's bent and I need to kind of bend it back a bit and see what's going on. Apparently, although very slowly, rolling into a tree, I've, I was going down a steep hill and I was nice and controlled and there's a big tree next to me and I did the thing of looking at the tree, and that's where I fucked up. <laughs> uh, and then as soon as I looked at the tree, I lost my balance, let go of the brakes, fell off the bike, and it just basically rolled and just stopped dead on the headlight, um, which is really expensive. Um, and obviously when it, 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 it twisted and messed everything up, it's all plastic. Anyway, I will, uh, also I'll, I'll tweak my bits that I want to do, um, and then I'll might film it, put them back together, and then I'll film uh, a ride out on it when I get a chance, and then put that in this video. So there we are, done. All the front suspension. It doesn't look any different um, with the front bit, although I will put the uh, tractive stickers on here. I just can't be bothered right now, but I will do it. Um, and yeah, there's all the adjustment on the top. And again, it looks so much better with the orange anodizing. So that's pretty much the only thing that you can tell the difference with the original ones, or from the original ones. And the new shock, still white, but we've got all the adjustability and everything else. And just screw around here. So yeah, there it is. So 
I guess I'd better go out and test this. We went up to the Yorkshire Dales to test it out and the suspension is a lot smoother and a lot plusher. My back end is just not bouncing around and bucking like it used to. My cousin could even notice the difference about how the bike was handling underneath me as he was riding behind me. Your suspension will be 10 times better than the eyes the nice thing about this suspension is of course I've got full adjustability, which you don't have on the stock S suspension, you just have preload in the rear. I still have a lot to learn about the suspension and what all the adjustments do and how to make it work best for me. And I look forward to learning all about that. Yeah, it's just like through this section, it's just a lot smoother. Oh, oh he says, he says he drops it. <laughs> yeah, but only gently. Uh, okay going too slow and tuck the front on the mud. 